Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quick and easy functional equation. We have f of x over x plus 2 equals x squared, and we're going to be solving for f, or we're going to try to find an expression for f of x in terms of x. Now, to be able to find f of x from here, couldn't we just replace this whole thing with x, set it equal to x, and then just get the f of x from there? Well, if you replace x plus x over x plus 2 with x, you're going to get a quadratic equation, which will have numerical solutions. And if you plug them in, that's going to give you a numerical value. So that's not really going to help, even though it kind of looks like it's going to help. So we are going to do it a little differently. Now, before we start solving this problem, I kind of wanted to explore what Wolfram Alpha can do for this kind of problem or Desmos. So I'm going to show you the results. So make a guess on what they're going to give us because you'll see the results in a couple seconds. Ready? Let's go. So first of all, can Wolfram Alpha solve this problem, right? Unfortunately, no. I asked Wolfram Alpha, what is f of x if f of x over x plus 2 is equal to x squared? The result is f of x. Well, duh, we do know that, but what is that in terms of x? Can't do it, too bad. What about Desmos? Desmos can't do it either. It doesn't even understand the expression. It says, we only support implicit equations of x and y. Well, I'm sorry, they can't solve it. So hopefully there is some type of software or somebody is going to come up with a program that can solve these kinds of equations. I haven't tried ChatGPT. Maybe it can solve it. If I do, uh, I'll let you know what the results are. Because a lot of times I find it pretty weak uh, when it comes to solving. I tried some functional equations and it just kept giving me something pretty standard, but it doesn't solve the problem. Anyways, let's go ahead and solve it. Human beings are smarter than AI, at least for now. Okay, so here's our equation again. F of x over x plus 2 equals x squared. Of course, there's a lot of things to talk about, like what is the domain, what can x be, what can x not be, so on and so forth. We're not going to get into the details first. I want you to keep it very simple, especially if you're new to functions. How do you simplify what's inside the parentheses? Setting it equal to x is not a good idea, but setting it to another variable, like equal to another variable, is a good idea. How about t? Because t is awesome. It is a good variable, like t. I like t. Anyways, so let's see what happens. Set x over x plus 2 equal to t. Alrighty. And then, here's what we're going to do. We're going to solve for x. So let's cross multiply. xt plus 2t. 2t or not 2t, that's the problem. And then we're going to go ahead and put the x's together. Subtract xt. And then our goal is to solve for x, remember. Take out x, factor 1 minus t equals 2t. And then finally divide by 1 minus t. And this kind of tells you that t can't be 1, right? Because if t is 1, we have something undefined. And that kind of means that this whole thing can't be 1. And if you think about it, that'll make sense to you. Because if x over x plus 2 is 1, then we got a weird equation, which is super weird because it doesn't have any solutions whatsoever, even in the complex world. You can go to a different world. Well, infi how about infinity? Well, we're not taking limits here, so don't get too excited. Okay, so no solutions for that. That's why t can't be 1. So you can think about what the domain of this function is going to look like. Now, we got this, obviously, and we have our equation still, f of x over x plus 2 equals x squared. So what are we going to do with this x value? We're going to plug it in. We do know what happens on the left-hand side because that's what gives us t inside the parentheses. But for fun, you can actually go ahead and plug it in again. It's kind of like a double check. What if we made a mistake? Because in that case, our substitution is not going to work. You see, there's a way to check it. On the right-hand side, it's just direct substitution. x will be replaced with 2t over 1 minus t. Make sense so far? This guy over here basically replaced x over here. Of course, in all places. Good, good. Now let's go ahead and make a common denominator at the bottom of this denominator or the denominator of the denominator or the denominator of this fraction, something like that. 2t plus 2 minus 2t. I'm making a common denominator here 
over 1 minus t. And notice that when you flip and multiply, these two are going to cancel out, and the 2t cancels out. We have 2t over 2, which is t. You see, this kind of guarantees that, yes, we are going to be getting f of t from here, which we already verified. And then this is equal to that, which is, I'm going to rewrite it. So that should be the answer, right? But I wanted to find my answer in terms of x. I don't like t. Well, I like t, but final result should be in terms of x. So we can just use our dummy variable. t was dummy. x is smart. Then we're going to go ahead and replace t with x. I know some people are going to object. They're going to say, like, wait a minute. Didn't you already use x? Yes, I discarded it, though. This is a new x, brand new. And this is going to be the answer. Of course, if you want to go fancy and kind of square it like this and then square that, you're going to get 1 minus 2x plus x squared. That's going to be probably a little nicer. Make sense? Okay, great. So now let's see if we can solve this problem using an alternative method. Uh, hopefully that will give us the same answer. But to recap what we did, we basically set what's inside the parentheses equal to a single variable, t. Any variable is fine. You can use y. Don't just use x. You can also use this fancy curly x. And then make sure to distinguish between them, though. And then we solve for x. Notice that we cross multiplied, we isolated x, and then finally divided, and we got the answer by substitution. Okay? So far, so good. Let's proceed with the second method. So I'm kind of thinking, like, there isn't really a lot of ways to solve this problem, but there's actually another way to look at it, which is made up of the following. I'm going to invert what's inside the parentheses because I can't separate x over x plus 2 into two fractions, but I can do its reciprocal. You know what I'm talking about? I'm going to write this as f of 1 over x plus 2 over x. And then, now this expression right here can actually be written as x over x, which is 1, plus 2 over x equals x squared. Great. What am I going to do with this, though? I have an x squared here. I have a 2 over x. So here, here's the part. It's not going to be really nice, but let me just tell you, we can also write x squared as 1 over 1 over x squared. And then 1 over 1 over x squared is basically this number right here will be squared, but we have to cut it in half first. Makes sense. So we can kind of write it like this. Multiply by 4 here and here. They're going to cancel out anyways. And then this just becomes 4 over x squared. So I can write it as 4 over 2 over x squared. But then I have the 1 plus 2. So I can put a 1 inside. Oh, no, that's, that's too complicated. But anyways, hopefully you get the idea. For me, you can try to invert and transform it. But what it does is it takes something like this. Okay. Oops. It's going to take, f is going to take something like this. It's going to reverse it. So f is going to take, let's say, this whole thing. And it's going to reverse it. When it reverses it, it's going to be 1 plus 2 over x. So we did reversal, reverse, okay, or reciprocate, whatever. And then it's going to subtract 1 from it, subtract 1. That's going to give us 2 over x, okay. And then it is going to flip it again, or should I call flip? I think it's better than reverse because reverse can mean many things, but flip, I guess, is upside down. Flip it again, that's going to give you x over 2. And then double, that's going to give you x. And then square it, square, that's going to give you x squared. You see, that's going to give you the outcome, but a lot of steps. So now you got to take a variable, apply all these steps, and you'll get the function. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.